Amen. Stand with us if you would. We're ready to begin our service. Let's sing together. Send him on down.
I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. Amen. So I will have no fear. Hallelujah. What can mere people do to me? Amen. 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 That's his word in Deuteronomy. He says, be strong and courageous and do not be afraid or tremble at them for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. Yes. And he will not fail you Glory. or forsake you. Yes. So you know what? I can count on one thing. The same God that never fails. He won't fail me now. Amen. Amen. He Glory. won't fail you, church. He is faithful. Amen. So here's the answer to facing your problems. Choose him. Choose to praise him. So that's how we deal with it. We choose to praise Him because you have to make the choice. Praise doesn't just happen. It's a conscious decision. You know, praise isn't driven by emotion. There's emotions attached. We begin to praise the Lord and it just bubbles up in our soul. We're emotional, but it's driven by our will. It's a conscious decision. You have to say, no matter what's going on around me, I'm going to praise Him. So I want us to do that today. We don't just praise God when we feel like it. We praise Him in all situations. Amen. In victory or in defeat, in need or plenty. So, yes, I will lift you high. In the lowest valley, all my days, I will praise you. Psalms 9 and 1. He says, I will praise you, O Lord. And my whole heart, I will tell of all your marvelous words. Amen. He says, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. And finally, Psalms 34 and 3. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So I think there's plenty of instruction of what we need to do. So now I want to ask you, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. Amen.
we got a lot of things to do. Receive two offerings, announcements. I don't think now's the time. So I want to ask Brother Turner, if he will, to come on up. The water is troubled. The spirit's moving. We want to let him just, we're going to turn him loose. This is an anointed man of God that I believe is going to deliver a wonderful word to us. I pray each one of us will open our hearts and our ears that we'll receive. Hold your offerings. We're not going to forget about it. When the service is near the end, we'll take up offering. We'll do other things. But right now, I feel like we're standing on holy ground. The children can be dismissed to a children's church. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this day. Good to be here the 13th day of Love You Airy. They tell me this is Love You Airy. It's in February. So we're here today. And uh, tomorrow is Love Day. And so today is Valentine's Eve. However, they want to commercialize it. But all of that being said, tomorrow being Valentine's Day, this being Love You Area, I'm here to tell people we're here because this is the day the Lord hath made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. And God is love. Yes. And I know that God is love because He loves me. Yes. How many of you feel the love of God shed abroad in your hearts this morning by the Holy Ghost? You know the love of God was made manifest through Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We used to sing that little chorus, you know, that Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. And it said little ones, and I'm a little one, but to him I belong. I am weak, but he is strong. Oh, so today we're here and we're trying to share something with you. It's good to be with you and I I know I've seen you. I've been in your services several times over our last retirement period and in between our little interim works that we're doing. We come by every once in a while because we love these folks. Brother Richard, Sister Noel, Brother Mark back there, we've known them for uh, uh, 40 some years I was in the ministry. If they won't tell you, I will. All right. I'll tell you. So we've been sharing together in ministry for 40-something years in various places and various ways. And, and normally, I'm the one that turns it over to them. Today, they turn it over to me. But we're delighted to be with you here today. And I want to share with you a message from my heart to, for you today. I, I share it from my heart because I, I believe that I have received it from the heart of God. Amen. And I, when I was asked about coming and preaching today is, is in a filling capacity for you here, I began to reflect on a number of things and I thought, oh, well, you know, I've started to draw from a lot of things and I began to think and I, I thought about subjects and I got to them and I felt so good about them. I actually started working on them and I began to and I said, oh, that's good. And then all of a sudden, the Lord just spit and said, no. <laughs> and I said, but it was so good. He said, that was for you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Something for me. Amen. 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 So I've gone through a number of things and I've gotten to the place today where I want to share with you the message that it has a one word title and it is hard to live. Now this word is found more than one time in scripture in terms of our English word. But the word that I will share with you today heartily that comes from Colossians chapter 3. And if you go to Colossians chapter 3 and at verse 23, and I'm going to read 22 through 24 in your hearing. But from that verse 23, the word heartily appears. And it is the only time that this particular Greek word is used in Scripture. I like words that are used in great abundance because it means they are very special. I like words in word study that are used rarely and frequently, and particularly those that are used only one time, because again, it speaks to their special significance. 
And this word heartily is used only one time in Scripture. It's a preposition of a word ek, which means out of or from, and it comes with the word for heart. Colossians 3, verses 22 through 24, the Apostle Paul writes to us, Servants. Now, I know that he is speaking to fathers and mothers and children, but he is speaking to servants, and he's giving a natural servitude as far as what they were, but he's giving us a great doctrinal instruction about how we are to be servants of the Lord. Amen. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Now, that's for the servitude of those who are in the physical life, and in that day they had those who were bond servants and those who were free servants and those who served in the various capacities of people. But we know this, that we are the servants of the Lord. Amen. And we obey in all things our master. We only have one. Amen. Amen. And we do it not to the flesh, but we do it to the spirit. Amen. And we do it to the Lord himself. Glory. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Yeah. Not with eye service as men pleasers, <laughs> but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not of the men. Yeah. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Right. For you serve the Lord Christ. Yeah. Bless this word into our hearts and lives and bring forth, dear Lord, out of our lives fruit unto holiness and that, dear Lord, that advances your kingdom work, that it will somehow exalt Christ, that will edify the church and evangelize the community. In these things we come before you this morning asking for a touch of heaven from your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now this is... Uh, of course, love, love, love you, Ari, or whatever in today's love day. So I want you to give God a little valentine. When we were doing the uh, ministry and pastoring hour, our youth would, on this time of the year, they'd get up these valentine grams. That'd be a fundraiser for them. They'd get, you'd get a valentine gram, and you'd, they'd, you'd make one, or they'd help you make one, and they'd deliver it to, throughout the church, and they'd deliver it, and then, you know, for X number of cents or dollars or whatever it was, and they would use that for fundraisers. But I want you this morning to give God a valentine gram from your heart. I want you to say, I love you, Heavenly Father. I love you, Heavenly Father. Oh, say it louder now. Oh, if you was, married, if you was married to me and you said that, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> My wife said, I love you like you just said, I would, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> I love you, Heavenly Father. Yes. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Holy Ghost. Love you, Holy Ghost. I'll tell you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they all need to know we love them, we honor them, we reverence them, we appreciate them, we acknowledge them, and we're not ashamed to announce them. Amen. May the world know that I love God. Amen. He said, you got to love me with all your heart. That was the first thing he listed in all the things. you got to love me with all your heart. I want to use this term heartily this morning and share it with you. In this particular verse, there is in verse 22 but in singleness of heart the word that's translated heart there is cardio from which we get our word cardiac and then in the next verse verse 23 whatsoever you do do it heartily and the word there is the word the Greek word from which we get our word psyche and the word ek preposition is added to that and it comes out heartily and it's only one time in scripture that it's used this particular word but he said what's of you do it heartily under the Lord not under men now going to Ephesians Paul writes to this church in Ephesus and in chapter 6 he again says servants be obedient to them to do your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling singleness of heart Cardia again as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, psyche, with good will, doing service as to the Lord.
and not to men, with goodwill, doing service. How you remember the announcement? The angels proclaim, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Amen. God expects us to be peacemakers and he expects us to be goodwill ambassadors for Christ. So Paul has used this twice. In these passages, both occasions, both words for heart are used. Now, I want to go to one more time in scripture where you're going to find them used together. And this time comes from the Lord himself. Why would Paul be struck with this? Matthew chapter 11, that very familiar portion of scripture, verses 28 through 30. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, yes. and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Yes. He didn't say learn about me. Amen. He didn't just say learn from me, but he said learn of me. Yeah. You got to know me. I want you to learn. I want you to learn who I am. I want you to learn why I do what I do. I want you to learn from me, learn of me, how to react, how to act, how to interact. Amen. How to speak. When to have a soft word. When to speak boldly. I want you to learn from me how to do all things unto all men as unto the Lord. But he said, learn of me. And he said, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And he used the word cardia. And you shall find rest unto your souls. And here the word that he uses for souls is the word psyche. Which Paul has used. And it's translated heart. So what Jesus said was. Learn of me, learn of my heart, and when you learn my heart, when you learn my heart, my heart for the Father and the will of God, my heart for the lost, my come to seek and to save that which was lost, my heart for the hungry, for I feed them, my heart for the naked. My heart for the lame and the crippled, the blind, the deaf, the infirm. My heart for the brokenhearted. My heart for the troubled. My heart for the confused. My heart for the bewildered. My heart for all men of all ages and all stages and in all positions of life. I want you to learn my heart. When you learn my heart, you'll find rest for your soul. For your heart. So here obviously we're speaking about two aspects of what we would call heart. And how can we do it heartily to the Lord? Heartily means from psyche. Now we do it in singleness of heart. Colossians 2 and Ephesians 6 both tell us that in singleness of heart. Now that word singleness, it comes from a word and Greek word which means without pretense. Sincerity, simplicity. It's the virtue of one who's free from pretense and dissimulation. In other words, genuine. Amen. Genuine. So God said, I need you to come to me with singleness of heart. How can I have a heart that has no pretense in it when scripture tells me the heart's deceitful above all things? How can I have a singleness of heart when the heart is often wanting many things? Amen. Now when we look at those words and we look at the one that's cardiac, 
He said, I want you to learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. This is the only time in Scripture, Matthew 11, where the heart of Jesus Christ is mentioned. He mentioned his soul when he said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. It's like, but he said, hear my heart. I'm meek and lowly in heart. The only reference he made. So here in, he's speaking of heart, he's speaking of his position and his disposition. Now we take a position based on our heart. But our heart also reflects our disposition. In other words, if I love that woman, so I smile at her. I buy her stuff. I do things that please her. Every morning, I don't just fix her breakfast. I ask her what she wants for breakfast. You were blessed. <laughs> so I asked her why. Because I have a position. She's number one in my heart. But the disposition is, I don't want to just give you breakfast. I want to give you what you want today. Yeah. Oh, how many of you know that this is the day the Lord has made? Yes, and the end of man's renewed day. Oh. But God doesn't want to just give you leftovers. God just doesn't want to give you a rollover. God just doesn't want to give you a... He wants to give you what you want today. What you need today. Because now this heart 
In the Greek, the word heart, cardia, it's the effective, A-F-F-E-C-T-I-V-E, not effective, but affective, center of our being, the affections. The capacity of moral preference, the volitional desire or choice. In other words, plain and simple, you all know what it is. It's what produces your desires and what makes you tick. I'm glad that old ticker. How many of you know that's what we call it? Ticker? The ticker? It makes you tick. If your ticker gives up, you quit ticking. You gotta have a ticker. So what it does, it produces our desires. It is our desire and decision maker. Mm. How many of you know you make your decisions based on your desires? If I desire the Lord with my whole heart, I'll make my decisions based on that. With singleness of heart. Now this singleness of heart is there. That word heart is mentioned over 800 times in scripture. Never refers to this organ that's in the center of my chest. But it's always used for that. Now that singleness of heart tells us that that singleness comes when that heart, which is the psyche, is infused by God through the Spirit. Amen. Infused by God. Preacher, I don't know what an infusion is. How many of you have been to the doctor's office, hospital, the clinic, and you go to the infusion center? You go for infusion therapy. It ain't nothing more than sticking your arm out there and letting them put a needle in it and just taking what's out of that bottle and putting it in you. This word goes all the way back. This word goes all the way back in the psyche. Goes back to the Old Testament word for soul which meant an ensouled being. Mm. How did you get to be in his soul to be? He formed man out of the dust of the earth. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Amen. And he became a living soul. Mm. Now that Old Testament word soul, phago, is the corresponding Greek word for psyche. So what happened? The Lord took that old dirt. He breathed into it the breath of life and became a living soul. At that moment, when Adam stood up, what made him tick was the Spirit of God that came in there. That singleness of heart was given to him. Adam had a singleness of heart that was given to him. He exercised it over and over and over again. He was formed and Satan came to tempt. The temptation comes, the fall to temptation from Eve and then carried forth to Adam and they fall in the garden. A moral sin, a lapse. What happened? He lost his singleness of heart. He became a double-minded man. And if you read where a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways in the New Testament, literally means a double-souled man. Two psyches. Mm. That's like trying to live with two women. <laughs> and you can't do it. Don't you dare put your wife and your mother-in-law in the kitchen together to cook your favorite meal. I promise you it won't taste like even one of them used to. 
Because they're going to dibble and dabble. Well, this is the way I fixed it for him. Well, this is the way I fixed it for him. These little more than know it, don't they? Turn around and <laughs> now he comes back and says, I don't think I don't remember putting that too much in there. So that one turns around and well, pretty soon you got more seasons and you got stuff. You can't have a double soul. That singleness of heart was given. Because the Spirit was infused into him. And I'll tell you, when you're born again of the Spirit, God didn't just give you a makeover. God didn't just say, okay, it's rehab time. But God breathed into you of the breath of life. And you became a living soul, spiritually, a new creature in Christ Jesus, the workmanship of Jesus Christ. My God, when you got up, you had a singleness of heart. The only thing you wanted to do was please God. How many of you remember when you genuinely got saved, all you wanted to do was please God? That singleness of heart is something we must have. Now, that singleness of heart is evidence to us in some things. It's evidence to us in the fact that our, we have a spiritual appetite instead of a sensual appetite. Now the flesh, they can want some stuff. And the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Lusteth, that's a strong word. Amen. Lusteth against the spirit. But in that heart, that decision maker, we have that spirit infused singleness of heart. When that time comes, you'll simply say, no, that's not what God said. That's not the way God does it. That doesn't please him. And therefore, I will not yield to temptation. Amen. Amen. Don't matter who it is. Amen. So much so that Jesus said, if you don't hate your mother and your father, your brother and your sister, you, that doesn't mean literally hate them, but it means they got to be so far behind me. You got to want to please me so much that you can put them back down the line and say, I'm sorry. I can't get to you for what you tried to get out of me today because I can't go through Jesus. I can't go around him. I got to keep Jesus in front of me. I'm, I'm facing my Lord today. Amen. And I'm keeping that singleness of heart. Amen. In that way, we are doing heartily unto the Lord. What is that heart then that has that spirit infusion, that singleness of heart? It has spiritual appetites because we hunger and thirst after righteousness. Whoa. Hey, preacher. Tell you what you can do. If you quiet down a little bit and don't say and preach on some of that stuff, we probably can get you a raise. You can probably get a bigger church. Oh no. Preach what thus saith the Lord. You gotta live what thus saith the Lord. And if it doesn't please your boss, and if it doesn't profit you financially, and if they tell you you can make more money if you'll do it this way and it's ungodly, then you better just live with what you got and let God bless your little salary. Because I'll tell you, God can take a smaller salary with his blessing and it's much better than one that he curses as big. So we have a spiritual appetite that can be satisfied, whereas a sensual appetite cannot be. That's it. Preach we can have sanctified affections. Colossians chapter 3 begins with set your affections on things above, not things on the earth. Now, we talk about affections, we talked about it being the effective part, effective part of the man. And Jesus said, learn of me, learn of my heart. I'm meek and lowly in heart. What he meant meek, he was meekness and 
was gentle. That literally meant gentle there. And when he said lowly in heart, that literally meant meekness. And both of those are fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5. And Jesus said, if you want fruit of the Spirit, you've got to be attached to the vine. That's it. That's right. The only way you get fruit attached to the vine. You can bear that fruit. Now, that affections that we have, sanctified affections, and you can have sensual affections. Now, affections are good, and sometimes they seem real good. We were keeping our grandchildren yesterday. Brother Richard called, and I was sitting on the couch next to her, and the grandchildren were in the floor, and they had $3,000 dollars worth of stuff in view <laughs> and they're taking an Amazon box and a pair of scissors and cutting holes out of it and playing with the Amazon box <laughs> so here we are totally amused and somewhat frustrated <laughs> because of all that three thousand dollars worth of stuff, I could look at it and say, "I bought that, and I gave one hundred twenty dollars for that, and you don't even touch it." <laughs> Judge it by the dust; you ain't touched it lately. <laughs> Anybody know where I'm coming from? <laughs> We're sitting there, and then all of a sudden, Ella Bella, which is their eight-year-old Yorkie, <laughs> gets up on the couch. Gets on Janice's leg and then in a little bit walks over and crosses her lap into my lap and gets on my leg. Well, that's pretty good affection. I can live with that. They're all that little Yorkie laying there. That, I mean, that's kind of nice. Then Alabama decides she wants to be more affectionate. She turns around in my lap. She puts her front legs up on my chest and she tries to lick me in the mouth. It ain't happening. <laughs> now, I understand that she's showing me her affection, but that ain't what I want. I prefer sit when I say sit and stay when I say stay. I will tell you this. If Alabama had licked Janice in the mouth and she tried to kiss me, I'd say, not with that mouth. <laughs> How many know scripture we're told to kiss the sun? But I'm going to tell you every once in a while, I think Jesus has to look and says, not with that mouth. Ooh. Oh. Oh, I, I just feel like the Lord has reproved me or rebuked me or something. Well, maybe you were trying to kiss him with the wrong mouth. Maybe you didn't have sanctified affections. Come on down. Sanctified affections means I, I keep that heart pure and I keep my heart on things above, not on things on the earth. I keep myself in eternity. I'm more concerned about eternity than I am about time. I'm more concerned about God and the hereafter and all the things that I have just right now. Singleness of heart will take me from that place into a sanctioned service. Now you get a spirit infused heart, spiritual appetite, and you get one that has that sanctioned affections, those sanctified affections. That's what I really want, sanctified affections. That sanctified affections, the ones that are sanctified, and I'll tell you, you know how you get them sanctified? Through the word of truth. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. And by the Holy Ghost. If you don't know whether you ought to like it like you like it, and you ought to like it more than you like something else, take it to God. The truth, the blood of Jesus, 
And the Holy Ghost will tell you whether it's right for you or wrong for you. Yes. Once you know, you have that sanctified affections and it will lead you into a sanctioned service. You know why people can't do things heartily unto the Lord? Because there's too much pretense and too much guile in people's lives. Now, I, I can go on and I can listen to preachers and hear preachers that can preach. Oh, Lord, they can out preach me 16 days away from Sunday. And I've heard some that could preach, and man, I mean, they could homiletically and hermeneutically. I learned both of those. I don't use them and don't do them any good, but I learned them. But they can out preach me homiletically and hermeneutically. They can use the right words, they can make the right outline, they can put it all there, tick, 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 right in order. But when they do, it's tinkling mass and a sounding symbol because God's not in it. But then you get somebody who gets up there and does it heartily to the Lord. You can feel God. You can see God. You can know God. Because that spirit-infused heart is there. Amen. If you want a sanctioned service from God, God says you've got to do it from all your heart. You've got to love me with all your heart. You've got to do it from your heart. Sanctioned service means God signed off on it. How many of you want to do God's sanctioned service? You want to be his servant, but you want his sanctioned service. I tell you this, anything I, I'll use me first. I can offend me, but I, I'll get over it. Anything I or you do that is not sanctioned service by God is substitutionary service. You're trying to substitute something for what God wants you to do. How many of you know we live in a world today we're missing singleness of heart. We're missing Missing spiritual appetites. We're missing sanctified affections and sanctioned service. When you do sanctioned service, you can do it heartily to the Lord. Preacher, I really want to do some of that sanctioned service. I just want to serve the Lord. My God, hallelujah. Well, if you want to serve the Lord, he may not care what you want to do. In all probability, he just, just does not. I mean, you know, Jesus didn't get to do everything the way he wanted to, so liked it according to the flesh. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. All right. <clears throat> Folks, we got to get to that nevertheless point too, you know. You won't get there one time. You're going to get there over and over and over and over again. I want the Lord to be satisfied with me. My wife used to sing that song. Is my Lord satisfied with me? I want my life to be what it had to be. If you want sanctioned service and not substitution, your service is only one way for you to get there and you got to go. Go through this and get that desire producer and decision maker in you, that heart. And when you learn that, you'll learn that heart, you'll say, Whew. you know, I've been struggling to get the mind of Christ, but I found out that getting the mind of Christ, the best way to get the mind of Christ is get the heart of Christ. The mind will follow. Amen. If you want that sanctioned service, God will do it, but you're going to have to do it. And there's only one way. You're going to have to have a spirit-infused heart. God will infuse you. Brother Richard, if you want to. He will infuse you in your heart. He will not refuse your heart from 
Then becometh the Lord, he would in no wise cast him out. He will not refuse your heart, and he will not confuse your heart because he's not the author of confusion. So God's not going to say, no, I don't need you. And God's gonna, not going to say, well, I'm going to throw so much at you that you ain't gonna, you're going to leave here so confused you don't know what to do. If you're born again today, if you're not saved and you need to be born again today, you can be saved right now. Amen. And if you want to be saved right now, if you're not born again, I don't know anybody in here except these three, and that's just good. There's a few others that I've met on a casual basis, but I, I really don't know you, but if you need to be born again, Preach. I'm here to tell you. You can be saved. Glory. Oh. And God won't give you so much that he'll confuse you. He'll start you out with baby steps. Amen. But he won't leave you there. Preach. He'll make you grow. Glory. Till you stand tall and walk tall for God. So if you need to be born again and start taking baby steps, or if you need your steps ordered by the Lord, if you're in a place of confusion or whatever, if you need something from God, God is now ready, Glory. willing and able. Yes. And you can go out and you can say, I've done it heartily unto the Lord. Can I say something about Noel? She don't get scared and nervous when I say something about her. Again. <laughs> I call her Brand. She calls me Linhead. When I see this child, I've known her since she was a child. When I see her say, every time I see her say, when that face gets red, these old legs bulge, she starts stomping that foot. She's not putting on a show. She's doing it hard in the Lord. Folks, you'll have a different manifestation. You'll have a different ministry and a different manifestation. But they're all from God. Yes. So don't worry about the ministry or the manifestation. Just make it of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Is there anybody, anybody who wants to come right now? Glory! Said, Lord, I'm seeking today a sanction, service, life. I want to live my life heartily under the Lord. Yes. See anybody you want to make that commitment to God today? You want to start it right now. All right.